guys, it's Adam from Newspixel, and I'm smitten, not only by this book, but by the art that went behind it. I had no idea how gorgeous this film was until I read the book. And long story short, like, like I said, these aren't reviews. These are, I, I review books that I, that I like, so it's not a review. It's a, I already like it, go ahead and buy it. But as an artist, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to pick this book up, not only in terms of the gorgeous artwork, but in terms of the story that goes behind it. So I don't even wanna waste any time here. Let's crack this open right away. Let's not waste any time and jump right into our first impression. Now, before we even get into the artistry itself, which you're actually first introduced uh, to, which I find really beautiful about this story, beautiful about any of these particular types of stories, is the philosophy behind it, the premise behind it. And the creator, the director for the film, had communicated a lot with people of the South Pacific Islands, such as um, uh, uh, Hawaii, Tahiti, New Zealand, for instance, uh, where uh, it, their culture and their beliefs around the ocean, because they're technically, which you could be considered a very isolated society in the, an ocean in the middle of nowhere. Their saying is, the ocean does not divide us, it unites us which I think is very appropriate for what we're going through today, doesn't it? The unification of this planet, the unification of different cultures and people, and I, I think that's an absolutely beautiful note to start today's book on. Now, right off of the bat, when you jump into the book, you're, you're greeted with these very loose sketches. And these are loose study sketches of the culture, something that anybody who's ever, ever studied art has done in abundance. I remember grabbing my sketchbook and spending hours sitting in cafes, just sitting in the corner like this and just drawing people in my little quiet corner. And um, when you're in school, you might think that it's just kind of a waste of time, but what it's actually teaching you to do is be an observer. It's making mental notes of things. And I remember a documentary with John Howe. There's actually a documentary with John Howe, the lead concept artist for Lord of the Rings, who spoke about the difference between taking a photograph of something, which he did all the time, he would, go, went, he would go everywhere with a camera, he always travels around with a camera, versus doing a drawing of something. When you photograph something, you catch a much higher level of detail. But it doesn't necessarily embed it into your, psych, into your brain long, in terms of long-term memory. Whereas drawings take longer and they're, it's more difficult to capture uh, richer levels of detail, but it teaches you more about the subject that it is that you're studying. And it's a very good practice. Just sitting down and sketching people is a very good practice. And you can see how that's implemented directly into, this, into the initial studies of the culture of people who live in the South Pacific Islands. Now, when they, once you start getting into the, into the actual landscape itself, the mountains, one of the things they talk about is how every different mountain, you have to know your mountains. And they were saying every different mountaintop, all of these, basically these, these live volcanoes, essentially, that created this chain of mountains, all have their own unique identity, their own character. And um, they talked about the, they spoke about the importance of knowing the landscape, knowing the geology. And this immediately made me think of the artist Sam Nielsen, the concept artist Sam Nielsen, who incidentally teaches a course at Schoolism which I took, <laughs> an amazing course. And one of the things I love about Sam Nielsen, which you can see even on YouTube, if you look up some interviews with him, is that he's heavily scientific in his artistic approach. The science of light, the science of geology, the science of all the different things that he studies and how that understanding of science informs his artwork. And even though he has an arguably very uh, animation style art, the level of believability and depth and, and atmosphere that he captures in his artwork is second to none in my opinion. And that's reflected in this as well in a very beautiful way. Now, one of the things that I find particularly fascinating in this, in this section here, where they're talking about the design of different types of huts with relation to the different types of islands, like kind of capturing these different cultures is design language. And notice here how they're exploring different types of patterns as well, different types of mosaics, different types of structures, silhouetted structures that help to convey a certain unique culture within, a uh, unique subculture within this culture. And this immediately made me think of the book that I reviewed, Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm gonna be plugging a lot of books, by the way, right, which you can check out right here, where they explore different cultures that she visits, that uh, Aloy, or alloy, I said it wrong in my review and I got, and somebody had corrected me on it. Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is coming out soon. <laughs> 
but I digress. Um, I'm so excited about that. Um, exploring different design language is, is an incredibly fun and rewarding practice. And this is very beautifully displayed here. Just to capture subcultures within these different islands. Now, objectively, look at these different scenes over here and notice how, be, stepping away from the subject itself, pay attention to the patterns, the forms, the use of light and value. Observe this objectively. Forget about the actual subject itself and notice that the, the objective shapes, textures, and colors are evocative in and of themselves, which is, which is indication of the fact that the artists were focusing on this when they were drawing, stepping completely away from the subject itself. Now, here, we can both agree, you and me can both agree, um, that Moana is very cartoonized. She's very stylized as a character. She actually, her, her character design reminds me a lot of Emily, my daughter's designs. She loves to draw, she loves to draw girls with thick proportions, you know, like the thicker ankles, thicker calves. I love that aesthetic. It's very gentle, it's very soft, it's very feminine. And um, uh, in this, with this said, they're talking about here how they, they, they teamed up with anatomists and life drawing teachers to heavily study anatomy. So even in her stylization, her movement, the way she articulates herself, her structure, the way she holds herself, is anatomically very, very solid. And this is one of the reasons why in my mentorship, I, I literally teach anatomy on week two. Like, get it out of the way. You need to learn it. Everybody needs to learn it. Don't shy away because it's it's not knowing anatomy, not understanding anatomy is something that can that can, that can be a, a, a stick in your spokes throughout your entire artistic career. Learn it and learn it quickly. Now this, reminds me of an excerpt from the book Iron Giant, the book review, which you can check out right over here, um, uh, where the artists are exploring her personality. Whether you're looking at a, a character, a human character or a robotic anthropomorphized character like the Iron Giant, um, it's very easy to draw cool things, is one of the quotes from the book but it's very challenging to capture personality. Notice how there's all these different uh, artistic approaches to capturing the character of Moana. In charcoal, ink, car kind of crayon, pencil crayon type of line, all these different types of, of artistic styles to capture her soul, to capture her personality. And that later on is translated as respectably as possible into the final product. Some other beautiful examples over here as well. Just look at all these different varying styles, but all of them kind of giving us a different feeling and a different vibe. Let's just pause and have a moment of silence for this adorable face right over here. Tell me that's not the most adorable thing you've ever seen in your life. All right, moving on. Now, looking at this page over here where they're, where they're showing the different villages and stuff like this, I want to reference two books I've reviewed as well. Spider-Man in the multiverse, which you can check out right here. And we will wait a second for that card to go by. And then How to Train Your Dragon, which you can check out right here. And the reason why is because um, uh, one, of the, one of the super tools you can use for character design, which not enough artists, at least I would find artists who are a little bit less experienced, don't exploit nearly enough, is different diverse body types, ages and stuff like that. Uh, Eve, I was just watching a video by Ergo Josh as well, which he's kind of saying, don't always draw cute girls all the time. He's always scrutinizing drawing cute girls all the time. Um, it gets clicks, but it's limiting artistically. Not to say cute girls aren't worth drawing. That's not what I'm saying. But it's don't just do that because you don't realize how much expression, how much of yourself as an artist you can capture and you can express by exploring different types of humanity. Because don't, remember, it's your perspective of these different types of people that resonates into your artwork. It's super important. And I really can't encourage it enough. The kind of seeing this diversity is also very visually rewarding, very exciting, very inspiring. Now, referencing my book review of Big Hero 6, which you can check out. Yeah, I'm unapologetically plugging everything because I mean, <laughs> you start to see patterns when you've reviewed enough books, right? Again, we have great examples of different villagers and this villager over here, but notice something as well. In Big Hero 6, they were talking about how they were designing cars. 
background cars as you're as you're traveling through uh, San Francisco, uh, their made up uh, city in the book, in the in the in the movie, and um, how they made a point of designing them to create this kind of iconic crossbreed between Tokyo and San Francisco, but make them plain enough not caricatures, a little bit more generic in their proportions and stuff like that, so that they didn't draw attention to themselves. And notice how we're doing this exactly as, we're doing this as well in all of these different characters, creating kind of this, this non-remarkable caricature where everything's very proportionate and equally designed so that nothing steals the attention away from the main action of the story, the main story itself. Are you getting sick of me plugging books that I've reviewed? Well, thankfully I have more. The Hobbit, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Another very, very powerful tool for exploring culture and exploring design is step away from your characters for a bit. Let's say you're de designing a character and that character is wearing certain types of weapons or maybe they're sitting they're sitting in their living room and, you, and there's pots and pens and different types of doohickeys around the house, different set design pieces. Explore that. Getting into prop design and weapon design and costume design, all these things that, that are surround and inform a character design help to inform the design itself. Very powerful tool. So taking a moment to, to observe props and cultural elements is very, very effective for informing your character design when you don't know where to go with the character itself. Another moment of silence for another adorable character. Is she not the sweetest thing you've ever seen in your life? Boop. I've been watching a lot of Lucas the Spider. He likes to boop things. Boop. Now, if I haven't mentioned it in earlier books, I'm pretty sure I have. I can't stress enough the importance of doing something that I hated doing back when I was studying animation. Storyboards. I always used to find storyboards kind of like a chore that I had to do because my teacher told me to do it. But it wasn't until I attended a couple of schoolism workshops, the storyboard panels were by far the most entertaining and very often surprisingly informative how storyboard artists mix and match and piece together storyboards and stuff like that. Not to mention they're very often the most animated and fun because they're literally selling the pitch of a story. But the importance of doing storyboards is that it helps to pull your mind out of the superficial capturing a moment type of thing and actually pulls you through more of a cinematic moment in a story. A cinematic sequence of things and really tends to lend itself to compositions and character poses and environments and camera angles that are far more interesting because you're actually thinking of it in this in the in the context of something more alive and cinematic rather than something static and posy. I can't stress enough the importance of doing stuff like this. Now looking at Maui, the character of Maui. I love the character of Maui. I love the character of Maui because I love The Rock. I love Dwayne Rock, Rock Johnson, not just because he's very flamboyant and very vain and very large and very funny, but because he's a very compassionate guy too. And he, and I think his, his Samoan sweetness kind of resonates into his personality. And it made me think, I remember when I saw this for the first time, I thought, this is the second full length animated film based off of the islands of the South Pacific, AKA kind of Hawaii, New Zealand type of thing. And there's a reason for this. It's a culture that is, a very rich balance of extremes. They can be equally brave warriors singing the haka during the protests or during Lord of the Rings behind the scenes, they were singing the haka, this very moving warrior chant of respect. But also a very delicate, very gentle, very loving, very peaceful culture. It was exactly the same reason why I loved the movie Lilo and Stitch. It fit right into this this feeling, although the story was very different. Now these guys over here, the minute I saw them, the first thing I thought of was the Koroks from Breath of the Wild, which incidentally you can see right here in my book review. <laughs> Whatever, get used to it. I just think these are really adorable characters, but I love these little cute things. I should do more of this stuff. I, this is making me think I need to do more of these characters myself. I love little cute characters. They're a lot of fun to doodle out really quickly. Now I'm gonna end today's book review on this note, uh, uh, this beautiful piece of this floating island being dragged by boats and half submerged underwater. I think it's a very powerful image. Uh, to just take a moment to appreciate uh, artistry and how it, in so many different ways, is a reminder that life in and of itself is something worth celebrating. The beauty of it, the richness of it, the diversity of it, the good and the bad, and that artists are as something I've mentioned, I mentioned in my last talk, 
and I'm, uh, I'm mentioning it. I'm mentioning it today as well. That artists have a beautiful way of observing life and capturing it. I don't want you for a moment to ever lose sight of the incredible importance that you are being an artist. Because without it, in my humble opinion, the world would be a much less open-minded, empathetic, and beautiful place. So to all of you artists who followed me today, who watched today's book review, I love you. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next book review. Take care.